The first thing you should do when you're setting up your, for your gel is to find the apparatus that you need. Um, you need a glass plate and you'll need a comb that's set up in this bulldog clip apparatus. I would clean these instruments before use because you don't know who's had uh, whatever gunk on there before. So just a little bit of ethanol on there and give it a good rub on both sides to clean it and also your comb could probably do with a clean this one's filthy okay next thing you've got to do is carefully set it up so you can pour the gel um, I'll show you a different angle in a second but the comb's got to be placed so it makes depressions into the gel as it's setting and so this goes this way I'll show you how it looks from another angle so what you want to do is get down at the level of the bench and actually look along the glass slide and make sure that the comb isn't quite touching. This one's currently touching, so what we need to do is adjust the bulldog clips so that it's no longer touching and there should be enough space that you could slide a $20 note underneath it. So, so perhaps a millimetre or so and that's enough. Let's see what I've done to the bulldog clips very slowly. So the bulldog clips are now at a bit of an angle. So the other dimension you want to be aware of is uh, length. Make sure that you select, um, put the comb along the length of glass side rather than the, sh the short edge because you might have enough space for all the wells along the short edge and um, make sure it's not too close to the edge at the back here's a pen for comparison um, you want maybe six or seven millimeters to the edge and that way all the wells will be able to form up properly the next thing to do is to find some molten agarose, they'll be in yellow cap tubes in a heat bath somewhere around the lab, your demonstrators will point it out. There should be about 9 or 10 mils of molten agarose there. Uh, as it cools down it will solidify, so you have limited time to be able to use this, um, so just be reasonably quick about it. Now a lot of people get worried about this, um, I wouldn't worry too much because it's quite viscous, it will form up a a meniscus as it gets to the edges of the glass plate. So all you've got to really do is uh, pour um, confidently and reasonably quickly and keep going. It will keep filling up the edges and it won't pour off the edge. What you should avoid is all those um, drops but you can see it's formed a meniscus at the edge. Don't worry if you um, get this wrong. We've got plenty of agarose um, we can do it again. What I would do if it pours off the edge, as, as sometimes it does, uh, just let the gel solidify on the bench and we can clean it up once it's um, solid. You don't have to get every last drop out of the yellow cap tube. See there's about half a mil left. Um, what I would do is when it starts dripping just um, take the yellow cap tube away. The drips might set up some waves and, and spill the agarose over. Once at least 10 minutes have passed by, you can pull the comb out of the gel. It will have set by now. So to do that, it really is quite easy. They're, they're robust. Um, you can treat them with a little bit of force, but what you need to do is put your fingers on top of the gel, nice and set, and just pull this straight up. Easy. Next thing to do is to set up your gel tank. So you just need to um, pull the lid off. Uh, most of them have little buttons on either side. They're just sitting there, just put your thumb on that and pull up with your fingers. Most of them also have some tape. Now you need to put your gel in so, it's, so the wells are situated above the tape. It makes it easier to load and it also gives you an indication of which way the DNA is going to move. Next you should find some TAE, um, oops, this is also known as running buffer and this is full of irons uh, so the electric current can pass and it's the right pH. 
So just pour that in. And you want just enough so it just covers over the top of the gel. Once all the wells are filled in, that's fine. You might find that your, your gel moves around a little bit, that's alright, you can reposition it at any stage. So now we'll have to load, uh, load the gel. There's a couple of tricks here and what I usually do is use my non-pipetting hand and get it as close to the gel as possible. It doesn't have to be pushing down on top of the uh, electrophoresis tank but it just acts as a, um, a place to support your pipetting hand. Now um, you want to go into the well you want the liquid to go into the well you don't want your pipette tip to stab through the bottom though so to do that you can stick the pipette in and you can tell that you're inside the well by giving it a little wiggle now when you expel the liquid make sure you do it slowly if you do it too quickly it will force liquid up and out of the well and then once you have delivered all of the liquid pull the tip out and then release your thumb off the plunger. Okay, let's see that from a slightly different angle. Here comes the pipette tip and it goes into the running buffer just into the well and you can see it wobble there but it's not far enough down that it's going to split the bottom of the well. So just slowly expel liquid into the well and when you've emptied the pipette, pull it out and then release the plunger. Once the blue dye has run off the edge or it's just about to run off the edge, you can turn off the machine and take your gel for staining.